Howdy folks, T here. Today I've got something kind of different for the channel, uh, and by that I mean a video game review. So last week I bought Bassmaster Fishing 2022 through Dovetail Games. It came out on all platforms, major platforms, so the Playstations, the Xboxes, and Windows PC. And uh, I grabbed it for Xbox One S, so I've been playing for about 12 hours or so. I'd give, you know, maybe 10 or 12 hours. Um, I recorded some of that footage, and I want to use that to give everybody a little sample overview as far as what some of the features are, as far as the play modes and the options in the game. Um, kind of like a review, I guess. I'll give you some opinions along the way, but I script out a bunch of voiceovers. I try to record those, and it just sounds robotic. It doesn't sound natural, so I, I'm not going to do all that noise. We're just going to sit here. I'm going to play the footage, uh, and I'm going to kind of narrate and commentate over what we got going on. By the time we're done, hopefully, if you're on the fence as far as if you want to move forward with purchasing or not, uh, you'll kind of know what to expect if you decide to go ahead and pull the trigger. So with all that being said, let's get into it. Let's take a look closer at uh, Bassmaster Fishing 2022. So we'll jump into the basics of what we got going on by looking at some of the options and the menus and whatnot. And then we'll look more at the specific gameplay. And I'll have my little inset video here and there. So that way uh, I can still stay engaged with the viewers because that's obviously why I'm here to let you know what's going on. So taking a look here. The first options we'll go into look specifically at the uh, character customization. So you get to make your guy or gal that you end up playing with. Um, you do have the option if you want to, you can use one of the 10 pros that they have modeled in the game. Um, so that's kind of neat because they are actual BASS pros. So if you are a fan of any of those guys, you can use them um, as your own character. But if not, you can use a created custom character, which is what I did. Um, you get to pick clothes and shoes and all that kind of stuff, jerseys and whatnot, uh, hairstyles, of course. So my guy looks a lot like Eric Andre, the philosopher. So if you know who Eric Andre is, that's kind of who I was going for. So you get to make your guy or gal and you're all set up um, to get out on the water with that person doing their thing. Um, so that's kind of neat. There's not a whole lot of options for that, but you don't need it. The main stuff is the loadouts. So the loadouts, uh, that's your rod and your reels and your lures and all that kind of stuff. The game comes with some pre-made ones, but you can make your own. I made my own here. I call it get paid because that's what happens when I use the gear that I put in there. So talking about the gear. So you set up your rod, your reel, your line, your lure, as far as your rig, and then the lure itself. So the rods and the reels, they're all based off of actual rods and reels. So real manufacturers and real um, models that you could technically buy in person. Um, like in person having to buy them you have to buy them in the game using some of the credits that you get by completing some of the challenges and the events so everything's got its cost as you'd imagine um, all the reels are left-handed which is kind of weird because I'm right-handed for casting but I'm left-handed for spinning so I, I can't sue them quite yet um, but you set all that stuff up you get your line now the reels um, and the rods are, you know are pretty straightforward, but you know the lures themselves can get complicated. So what I do is I show you in here as I go through some of the selections. You've got Carolina rigs, drop shot rigs, big heads, Ned rigs, uh, Texas rigs, and what's called no weight. And no weight just means a lure that is by itself everything. So like a crankbait, spinnerbait, all that kind of stuff. But all the rigs that aren't the no weights have they're all separated out by weight and hook size. So all the Carolina rigs just have, you know, for all the different weights, it's got different hooks, all the drop shots, same thing. So I don't know why, because they're all spread out. So you've got like 20 different Carolina rigs, 20 different drop shot rigs, and every single one of them costs credits. So in order to have all of them, you've got to buy all of them because you can't, you know, if you buy a Texas rig at a certain weight with a certain hook, that's the one you have until you buy another one. Even if it's the same weight, if you want a different hook size, you got to buy it again, that kind of thing. I don't know. Sure. Um, you know, the, the no weight lures, which is all your stuff, your spinner baits, your crank baits, top waters, all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of them. I mean, it's not, you know, a small selection, which I think is great. Um, and they're also modeled after real life companies and real life models of lures that they actually make and real life color schemes that they actually make. Now, again, you have to buy them all separately, which makes sense. Um, but you know, you can spend a lot of your credits buying all the different lures and all the different colors, which is just like real life. Um, so that's a thing. I mean, you can get lost in the menus and I feel like folks that aren't familiar with, you know, fishing tackle or don't, you know, bass fish either recreationally or otherwise, this is probably option overload for a lot of those folks. Um, so it does make sense to experiment, to try to find, you know, stuff that you're comfortable with. Um, at the end of the day, I created four rod and reel combos and all of the tackle I wanted to go along with them. 
Uh, the boat selection screen, there are six boats currently in the game. You start out with the Bass Cat Pantera, but there are other options. Again, you have to buy them with credits. Um, they're not cheap, just like real boats. And you can get different color schemes or different wraps, paint jobs, whatever you want to call them. But you start out with the same one. It's all good. Uh, Location-wise, real lake locations. Gunnersville, Ray Roberts, uh, Sabine River. These are all places that actually exist, which is neat. St. Lawrence River, um, Lake Hamilton. You got Chickamauga or Maga, however you say it. It's that one. Um, Toledo Bend. And then we've also got the St. John's River. So they could be adding more at some point, and that'd be neat. Um, but these are real ones. So you've got species um, selection tools. They show you what's in the water. It gives you a pro tip on what you can use to catch them. It logs them and all that kind of stuff. All neat. Speaking of catches, there are what's called legendary fish. Each body of water has them. They all have weird names. Um, I, you know, I don't know who all picked what, but they've got different color schemes. It shows you their size uh, as far as their weight and their length. Um, I guess it's part of, it's an achievement to catch them is what I'm saying. You get bonuses and whatnot. I haven't caught any of them yet. I haven't tried to, uh, they're there. Um, you can select sponsors with different brands. And if you get those brands, you can get discounts on some of their gear in the uh, gear shop. So that's something to look toward. Um, if you're looking to try to save a little bit of money, uh, when you're buying some of the gear, dovetail live online feature shares media and stuff. I don't have it. Haven't signed up for it. Can't tell you much about it add-on store dlc always got to make that money with the dlc i've bought none yet the online features that might be a limit to this review so to speak i haven't used any of the online stuff i don't have an xbox live gold membership or whatever um, i don't have game pass all that kind of stuff so from my understanding there are online games that you can play right now i haven't played any of them can't speak to them i will at some point but right now you know i'm just looking at the core fundamental gameplay stuff so we've, we're looking at the career mode right now there's four series of tournaments that you can play. College series, the Opens, the Elite series, and then the Classic itself. So you start with the College series, you've got some events in there, there's four of them. Then you go to the Opens, there's multiple events in there. You go to the Elites, there's multiple events. Um, most of them are catching like highest combined weight, or the most species, or the most combined length, or the total combined length of all catches different modes it just depends on you know where you're at so of course just read the description as far as what each event looks like and what they're trying to actually use as criteria for winning um this is the last event in the the, the uh college series so we're out here I forget where it's at it's at st john st lawrence excuse me um standard you know best five bass you know large mouth small mouth or spotted or whatever it doesn't count you know if you go out catching a bunch of trout or whatever you know it's not going to count those so keep in mind as far as which species are the ones um, that count towards your total weight. So, I mean, we're mimicking kind of like real life tournaments. Um, it lasts 30 real time minutes, um, but it covers the course of an entire day. So that's, you know, something to keep in mind. The graphics are great in that regard. Like you start out in the morning and it's got that kind of like daybreak looking vibe, middle of the day, everything, you know, the sun's directly up uh, at dusk. It gets a little dark again. So, I mean, that's all neat. It kind of has that time passage thing, but just looking, I mean, right here, we're chilling, we're driving, I'm panning around with the camera. This is gameplay footage. Like I said, this isn't promo or anything. Uh, we've got the Unreal Engine under the hood and it looks good. I like it. Looks pretty good. Uh, here's a marker buoy line. So all of the maps, you know, it's not the entire lake. It's not the entire river that you would find in real life. The sections go to wherever those buoy markers are and that's your bounds. Um, here in the start menu, you can look at some of your options. You've got catch summaries, your controls, your leaderboards, uh, and you got a map. And on the map of the body of water, you can look at various locations. You can set waypoints, all that kind of stuff. Um, so you don't have the entire actual body of water. They didn't model the entire thing. So just keep that in mind for what it's worth. But you're driving around. We're looking at this fish finder here, this 2D 1980s style. Um, it's outdated is what I'm saying. Modern electronics look nothing like what you find in the game, but that's, you know, whatever. They'll figure it out if they want to update it. But you're, you drive around, you look for some markers to pop up. You can jump on, you know, the front of the boat and you can still tinker with tackle. You can change lures. You don't have to worry about being, you know, back at home base or anything. You can change lures and, you know, different setups in the, you know, while you're out on the water. So. Uh, you can change your gear as conditions dictate, which is also kind of, you know, similar to what happens in real life. Um, excuse me with the burp there. We're doing this live, basically. Anyways, here's issue number one I have. The lure animations. This is a spinnerbait right here on screen. Those blades aren't spinning. That skirt's not moving. Like, it's just a static image. Um, the lure animations are primitive at best. The, you know, the crankbaits don't wiggle. 
the soft plastics are rigid, almost like they've been deep frozen or epoxy covered. So that's my biggest kind of complaint or criticism right now is the fact that the lore animations are pretty much non-existent. Um, hopefully that gets uh, updated, addressed, or otherwise dealt with in the future. But until then, that's a thing. Um, but, uh, you know, we're driving around here again. This is the middle of the day. Um, it looks good. I like the graphics. I think for what it's worth, and again, I'm playing on, you know, console here. Uh, I don't, I don't think, I don't think it looks bad. I just don't. Um, so you're getting out. Now we got the troll motor going. And the troll motor is not covered at all in the tutorial. So there's a tutorial section thing you play through when you first start the game. Um, it doesn't talk about the troll motor at all. So I pull it up, I hold A, and uh, use the D-pad. So on the Xbox controller, um, that's how you activate the troll motor. It's got three speeds, and you can control the speeds, and you don't have to have like your finger on it to be using it. So like right now, my boat is trolling. Um, and I can go in and change the direction as I need to in the speed, but unless it's off, which is those green arrows not being green at all anymore, um, your boat is trolling. So you can like troll down a shoreline and keep casting and reeling and catching, which is, you know, similar to real life, which is neat. Um, but the tutorial mode does not talk about trolling motor usage at all. So just keep that in mind. I don't really use it either. So it's kind of one of those things where I guess it's neat to have, but when you find a spot where you're catching, you're not really using the troll motor and your boat doesn't move. So it is what it is. Um, yeah, two view modes. So you've got the underwater like lure camera or the lure cam is what I call it. Then you can, uh, at least on the Xbox controller, you push in the left stick and it goes to the over the shoulder third person camera perspective. There's no POV like I cam. I don't really think we need to have it, but you know, I've, I've seen some folks talk about that. We got snag there. Um, the snagging is a thing. If you're using the lure cam and then your lure is about to snag, it'll automatically jump to the over the shoulder camera. So that's kind of like your t you know quick way to know you're about to snag. So that's a thing, just keep that in mind. But uh, I've got some other footage here. So we're, we're gonna start catching fish finally. Um, so we'll talk about some of the mechanics. So the, the core component, you know, obviously the whole point of the game is to you know, catch fish. So. We're casting out. We got three different types of cast, long range casting, medium range casting, and short range casting. I push in the left control stick on the Xbox controller to select those be before I start casting. I really only use the um, long distance cast. So, uh, I mean, it makes sense to look at the other ones, but really I'm not gonna go into why you would use one over the other. Cause right now I don't really know. Um, I'm, I'm just long casting all day regardless. Uh, so you find a spot, you see some fish in the water with the lure cam. Um, you're casting out and I think we end up getting a fish here on this cast. So we got to talk about some of these mechanics here. Uh, now the bottom left hand part of the screen has all the stuff you need to know about what's going on with the actual lure, the rod and the reel. So we end up getting bit by a pike that goes from vertical to grabbing onto the lure. Pull back on the right stick when the fish bites. I got a perfect strike. So what that means is bottom left hand corner, you got a status bar is what I call it. Um, it's fully green. Now that status bar goes down. It depletes as you either strain the hook or if the hook is slipping. Um, and if that bar goes all the way down to red and then is com gone completely, you lose the fish or at least you get to the point where you can lose the fish. Um, so as you get a good strike, a perfect strike um, gives you the most. A good strike gets you a little bit. A, a poor strike gets you the least amount. Uh, it just gives you more wiggle room. Now I've got this big old pike on here. Uh, and I decided to fight it. So a lot of it deals with how you balance your tension with uh, your line and your, you know, your reel and whatnot. And by that, I mean, um, you play with your drag. Right now, my drag on screen is at 34 and I'm dropping it down because I've got too much tension on the hook. So I'm using the D-pad while I'm reeling with the left trigger. I'm also using the right stick to direct where the rod angle is. So you're using a lot of different controls all at the same time. The goal is to have that uh, meter for the uh, tension right there in the middle, like right there on screen, you see it's green got fish on as it goes up it turns red and says um, hook strained if it goes down all the way it turns red again and says hook slipping so you have to play with the uh, the drag setting um, your rod angle your reeling all that kind of stuff to try to get that status bar to balance right there in the middle and have it green that means you're not losing line you're not stressing out the hook it's not slipping it's not straining you're actually you know fighting the fish if the hook goes um, you know, obviously too much strain like it is right there. You know, it says it, so you know you got to back off. If you're straining the hook, you shouldn't be reeling with your drag all the way up. You got to dial the drag back, that kind of stuff. It takes a lot of balancing the different controls. It can be overwhelming. Just sitting here talking about it, I'm getting lightheaded. Um, but that practice is very, very essential. 
Uh, I got this big old pike here for whatever reason. Um, so Eric Andre's got him a nice one. So not what we wanted, but it just shows you kind of what that whole dynamic looks like as far as when you're reeling in uh, a catch and having all those different things you got to balance. Now, generally speaking, you find a good spot in game, you know, you'll cast out, you'll see the different fish animations and whatnot underneath the water. Um, there's no real rhyme or reason I found when it comes to, you know, why some lures work and some don't. So if you cast one around fish and you're not getting, you know, a bite within the first couple casts, just change what you're using. Um, you'll probably end up finding something that you're going to bite. Of course, in the tournaments, at least if they're catching on or, or scoring only bass, rather, you know, you want to get those suckers. So, I mean, you got to, you know, take into consideration a lot of factors um, that just, you know, don't really it's not super obvious in other words you can catch a lot of fish doing a lot of uh things with different lures i don't feel like you have to have a certain thing on just make sure it's where it needs to be don't reel it too fast i've gotten bites as the lures hit the water I've gotten bites as the lure sat on the bottom of the of the lake or whatever doing nothing so experiment i guess is what i'm trying to say but we've got our spinner bait here with the blades that are frozen um so that's that now looking more you, you know here's a different lure it's a soft plastic that is fully rigid uh, again, the animations are lacking, but uh, the kind of like the main thing here, when you get a bite, for example, if you get a bite from a fish you don't want, like right here, I got some type of trout, I believe. Uh, the option you have when you have a fish hook that you don't want for whatever reason is to either strain the hook or to allow the hook to slip. So here I chose to dial the, the uh, drag all the way down. I went down to zero and I kept reeling. So if you keep reeling with the drag on zero and the fish pulls, it starts to deplete that, uh, I guess the hook quality meter there on the very far left. So you see that bar going down into orange, it's dropping down now into red, it's blinking, it's flashing, something's wrong. Eventually, at this point, the, uh, the hook lets go and you don't have to worry about that fish anymore and you can still catch fish. It keeps your lure, you don't lose the lure or anything like that. So that's the thing. Um, if you get something you don't want, just dial your drag all the way back and let that tension fall. Um, another thing that happens, so I guess you could call it like a criticism, so to speak, is the fact that it's not uncommon to see glitches with the uh, fish animations. And you saw this in the uh, preview clip, if you saw it here on my channel. Um, the most predominant one that I see is this vertical thing, where the, the fish animation is like perfectly vertical, like right there. And it kind of glitches and does all that kind of stuff and clips through the terrain and all that whatnot. I don't code games. I don't know if that's an easy fix or what. Uh, it'd be nice to not see that. I mean, it's not the worst thing ever, but it's kind of frustrating to watch. Um, not, you know, it, it doesn't happen all the time, but it happens enough to where it's noticeable. So just something to keep in mind. Um, fish are swooping down, end up getting a large mouth here. Um, I didn't hook this one for whatever reason. Sometimes I don't know what it is. I just don't hook them you know they say to bump your reel speed all the way up and get the tension and even if you do that sometimes it just it doesn't hook them and sometimes you do nothing i've caught fish by they just bite and i i do nothing like i don't touch any of the controls and then i get like a good strike and i've i've done nothing so i don't know what's going on like right there i got a good strike but i'm sitting there just flailing around so i don't i don't know i feel like maybe that needs to be dialed in a little bit more or maybe there's just some random number generator in the background that determines whether or not you're going to get any type of hook set at all regardless of what you do so don't know how that's going to work so that's there fighting a fish we got a good large mouth on now the landing chance thing it popped up you hit a on the controller this meter pops up to where if you hit that little rotating like pendulum arrow thing right there underneath the fish head icon, if you do it perfectly, it lands the fish right then and there. You don't have to fight it anymore. And that's just what happened there on screen. Um, it's kind of finicky, man. Like sometimes if you, if you hit it too late, man, you're not going to get it. So if it turns red when you hit it, that means you didn't do it right. So you got to definitely practice that a little bit to make sure you can get that working for you. Um, so that's there. And then I've got a, a pretty egregious example of this vertical fish glitch. So let me just show you that. There we go. All kinds of vertical fish going on. There's that pike doing a little backup. Then we get a walleye because why not? Everybody likes walleye. So walleye master fishing 2023. I don't know. We'll see. Um, so overall, yeah, let's talk just general impressions. I mean, should you buy this game? Uh, I think... In my perspective, in my opinion at least, you know, I bought this game full price, uh, $39.99 on the Microsoft Store for Xbox. I think it comes with Xbox Games 
pass or whatever it is. So if you already have the games pass, you can just download it. It's not an additional cost. But I just bought it standalone. Um, I didn't buy the DLC. I think it was worth it. You know, uh, if it was on sale, like if it was thirty, like if it was twenty nine ninety nine, I would have probably much less to complain about. Um, some of these glitches, the lore animation specifically, um, they need to be addressed. The fish glitches with the vertical thing, like you see here, needs to be addressed. Some of the animations with the guy, like his reeling hand, I don't know if you've seen it through the footage here, but it contorts in a way that's very unnatural and looks unsafe. So if, if you don't catch a carp, you'll, you will catch carpal tunnel if you reel like that. Um, but I mean, the gear, you know, I like that it's authentic to real life. Um, you know, the physics are kind of, you know, I mean, they're okay. Uh, it looks good. So, I mean, overall, I don't regret buying it is what I'm saying. Um, I'm being like nitpicky when it comes to some of these things. You know, it's just some of the visual things. Like if you're going to call it a simulator, then I want my lures to, to look like lures. Uh, I don't want them to look like they're just rigid things, which is what they do currently. So, you know, iron out some of those little details, um, you know, and I think my Eric Andre guy is going to be very, uh, you know, much more happy when he's out on the tournament trail. But that's kind of where I'm at. Again, I'm like 10 hours into the game. So, you know, give me another 10, 20 hours. I may have differing opinions. Uh, but the biggest thing I'll say here before we close down here there is a steep learning curve for this game. If you don't understand like what bass fishing looks like and what lures are and how to set up setups and stuff like that, this game is going to seem overwhelming. So ask questions, uh, do some research. I'm sure there's plenty of videos here on YouTube with people showing the specifics. But if you know, if you want to ask me a question, feel free. Jump in the comments below. I stream this game on Twitch every now and again. So if you want to watch there and ask some questions, please do. So if you can get through the massive learning curve and not let those you know glitches and some of the animation stuff bug you, you can have fun. And I think that's really what it's all about. It's just a nice way to spend time. If I can't get out on the water, I don't have a problem firing this up and playing it for a little while. Um, so that's my thoughts. That's at least what I think right now. It could change in a while. So dovetail, fix some minor things, and I want to be super happy. Um, and I think that's really what we all want at the end of the day. I appreciate y'all watching. Any questions or comments, you know where to leave them. I'll see you on the next one.